Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and welcome to episode 85 of PD's Awesome Guest Panel. Tonight's guest star is a very iconic and veteran actress and voice actress. You may know this lovely lady's work on projects such as the original Batman series, The Love Bow, Digimon, Darkwing Dog, and the, the animated series, uh, animated movie, Bebe's Kids. And she's personally one of my favorite actresses growing up. My guest at this time is Miss Susan Silo. Susan, welcome. How are you today? Thank you. And, and again, anything for you, Miss Silo. Well, uh, uh, you know, I'm excited. I, I have to say I'm always grateful for all the fans um, that, you know, keep our names alive and keep us feeling current and relevant because uh, the work that we do is very important to us and our audience is what makes us come alive. Absolutely. It's all for you guys. <laughs> Absolutely, Miss uh, Mrs. Silo. Uh, my first question uh, to you, and this is gonna be a typical cliche question, and that is, how did you get your first start or and or big break into acting? Take me there. All right, I'm gonna take you back in time. Uh, I'm gonna do you one better. Um, I've been doing this since I'm four years old. Okay, so yeah. So the story of me breaking into showbiz is this: my dad was an actor, my mother was an actor. Okay, of course, we say actor, actor now, I guess it's, that's more PC. But uh, anyway, um, you've heard of the Catskill Mountains, haven't you? The Catskill or, Mountains in New York? I, I believe so, yes. The Board Show, the board show yes. That's um, where my father was a social director at the Pine View Country Club in La Sheldrake, New York. And um, I was a little kid and wasn't allowed my father since he was the social director would do scenes skits and and comedy and singing and whatever and i wasn't allowed to see any of the shows until one night when i was four years old my father said i was allowed to come so they put me in back of the auditorium which they called uh the the social hall and and he was doing a sketch with another woman not my mother and he goes, you know, uh, he's acting along in the sketch, whatever. It's a love scene. And he kisses this woman. Well, a voice from the back of the social hall screams out, Daddy, don't do that. <laughs> well, there's my father, the actor, thinking, do I break the fourth wall or do I continue the scene? Well, mm -hmm. he decided to break the fourth wall. After all, it was the Catskill Mountains and all those people were very much in love with their social director, so they thought, uh-oh, he's going to do something too. Well, he said, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but the voice you heard was my four-year-old daughter, Susan, and uh, I normally uh, wouldn't have her at the show, but tonight was very special, so would you indulge me a moment and let me ask her why I cannot kiss this lady? And he did. He asked me, and I said, well... Because you'll get germs. <laughs> he said, oh, well, but I kiss your mommy. And I said, yeah, but you and mommy have the same germs. And everyone broke up and they said, oh, my God, you know, she has a mouth. Mm -hmm, <laughs> right? And he, he picked me up and brought me on the stage. And I never left the stage after four. I sang the Lord's Prayer, and that was my entrance into showbiz. Very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> Oops, break the fourth wall. And there's nothing wrong with breaking the fourth wall. I went on at nine. You talk about acting. At nine, I was on off-Broadway already in a play. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. At and now you've been in the in the acting industry for a very long time. And I was curious to know th this question. Are there any methods or uh, preparation that you do for a particular role? Like a warm-up? Yes. yes, there are. Very good question. Um, what I usually do is I get the look of the character. The look, what that character looks like. Now, obviously, in on-camera and on-stage, the cat I have I'm limited because I am physically the way I am. However, 
whatever changes I make, be it the color of my hair, be it how I make up my eyes, be it how I dress, then I go inside. Then I go inside and find out what makes this character tick. Who is mm -hmm. this person? And in voiceover, the same thing, oddly enough. I dress my character in front of the microphone in my head. I like, I'll give you an example. If I'm playing a villainess, I wear high heels to the studio. <laughs> if I'm playing a kid, I'll wear sneakers. You're very method actors. Yeah, very, totally method. Yeah, I love it. Stanislavski was a friend. <laughs> Not <laughs> that said, yes. I, I uh, was uh, at Theater West for a long time. My mentor was Carol O'Connor, who was also my English teacher at the High School of Performing Arts. I went to FAME, the High School of Performing Arts, the original, um, on 46th between 6th and 7th, not at Lincoln Center. It wasn't that pretty. But it was the place where I worked out. I learned. I just, I acted in, you know, many different uh, venues, but I was always studying, training, training, training. God bless you. <laughs> um, and I also want to ask you too, like when it comes to a particular scene though, and this is where like uh, for a raw, a raw motion question, like, and this is what I ask all my uh, guest stars too. If, if you were like, if you were doing a scene with a, a fellow co-star or, or a fellow actor or actress, and there's a particular scene where like, you like you and the act and, and the particular acting person with you have to be in a heated argument and tap on real life raw emotion that to tell a story uh and the person goes up to you and say hey miss silo th this scene requires us to get into a heated argument in which you, uh you are screaming at me i'm screaming at you i know this is gonna sound very weird but i need you to scream as hard i need you to lay into me so that way we I can I can sell it like I can make it feel very real. So that way, like I, I don't care if you make me cry. Just you gotta do this so that way we could tell a story. If you were approached with this uh, type of uh, method, what how what would you tell the person and how would you react? Well, I can give you a couple of examples on uh, Roots in Route sixty six. Marty Miller and George Maharis. Uh, I was Velma. Uh, I played this teenage girl who was involved with gangs and whatever. And I had a huge confrontation with George, who was pretty tough guy and everything. We physically fought. He had to push me down. He finally pushed me down on the ground, on the, uh, well, it was in a living room, but in a, in a room and practically sat on me. And I mean, we, we had a real go at it, fist, fist fight. And then of course, then the story comes out and I'm crying and carrying on. The same thing in the Lieutenant. I had a breakdown scene where um, um, Gary Lockwood, who was the Lieutenant, um, takes me down in another way. I, I, I love it. I love the confront. I, I, we, we actors really get into it. As a matter of fact, I was, I was black and blue from the fight with George Maharis and he was like so apologetic. He was like, I'm so sorry. We try and be gentle with each other in the physical sense. Emotionally, we rip each other to smithereens. <laughs> and in the breakdown scenes, I'll, I remember when I did the breakdown scene uh, for the lieutenant and um, oh, what was his name? Um, I know they sent me two that they were hideous. Uh, Buzz, Buzz Kulik. Buzz Kulik was the director. And after I broke down, this was before lunch, they don't normally do this, but the, the crew applauded. Oh. Now that was so cool, right? And this was over at MGM. And my mother was working in production at that time. And we went to lunch at MGM. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm just exhausted. I'm glad that's over because that was my big scene. And I've done it and whatever. I come back. I come back and we're supposed to do the scene again, but stop before the breakdown, right? Well, he fooled me and he didn't stop and I'm waiting for cut and I don't hear cut. And I was so upset 
that it led me right into the breakdown scene again. And I did it better than ever. And finally, of course, at the end, he said, cut. And I was going, <laughs> and he said, that's what I wanted. That's what I really wanted. And I was like, wow, that's what a director gets you. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I will say uh, one thing, Ms. Silo, I going back to what you said about like on screen like like you and the and the actor would like you guys would tear each other apart but on off screen they'd be very apologetic i like if i'd be the same way too like if i was doing a scene where i'm yelling at somebody i deep down i'm feeling very bad that i'm doing this and i and off screen i'd be the first one to go apologize after the scene is over i'd be like oh i'm so sorry Miss Ilo, i'm so sorry well we don't necessarily do it if it's verbal but if it's physical we do because slapping and hitting can get out of hand sometimes we don't mean it, but you know, that's the, you know, you just, you know, you try, you learn how to do it without really damaging someone, but you know. Absolutely. I agree with what you're saying. And this, I, I got to ask you too, as a long time voice actress or a voiceover artist, a lot of people have it like, which do you prefer voice act, actress or voiceover artist? You know, I don't really care. It's like, call me whatever you want to call me, but call me. Okay. <laughs> well, you've been in the voice acting business for a very long time. And here's a question I'm very, I ask all my uh, voiceover uh, guest stars on the show. And that is uh, in an audio commentary episode of The Simpsons, they claim that when Kirk Douglas appeared on the show, he hated using headphones because it hurt his ears. When you're doing voiceover, do you prefer wearing the headphones or no? Well, that's interesting because usually, um, really not, not voiceover actors, uh, don't like the headphones because they're not used to them and they don't use them in a certain way. Uh, I, 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 and half and half, I like to use them when I want to be in my head with the character and don't want to hear my voice in the room. I only want to hear that particular character because it may be so specific vocally that any uh, loss of the sound in the room, you know, it gets lost uh, yes. in the room. In other words, it's not only in my hands. Um, then I prefer the phone. Yeah, I, li I like the phone. I like the phone anyway because I just think it's so fun to listen to me. <laughs> Yeah, if I, I if I was doing voiceover, I, I would want to have like one ear in and then one ear out so that way I can hear what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's what the old, you know, uh, Gary uh, Owens used Gary. to do. A lot, of, a lot of announcers do that. They, they, they automatically put their hand to their ear. Yes. They don't use the can. They just do it with their hand. <laughs> that's so Gary true. Owens, Me too. I'm a big fan of his work. He had such a great announcer voice. God rest his soul. He was kind. I didn't know him at the time when I was doing the Tales Navy joins the Air Force, and uh, with Tim Conway, whom I adore, uh, rest his soul, and 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 also Gary. Uh, but I didn't know Gary, and I'm sitting in my chair, you know, my Susan Silo chair, uh, on the set, and this guy walks past, and I hear his voice, and <laughs> I went over <laughs> to him. I said, "You know, you have a great voice. You ought to do some voice over." <laughs> And I didn't know it was Gary, and we became friends after that. That's so cool. <laughs> um, now, before we get into the animated questions, uh, the animation questions, I have some that you, because you've done live action work too, and uh, this is going to lead to my next question too. And I could be wrong on this one, but uh, memories of shooting, uh, working on the Jack Benny program. W was this your first program? It was in, uh, in LA. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. It was in LA. Mr. Benny, well, he had the dressing room next to mine, and I was in awe of him because I was a pianist. Uh, that was one of the talents that I kind of put aside to do acting and singing and dancing and all that. It was like, how many things can you, you know, really do and do it full, full time, full well? Um, but I loved music, and we got to talking, uh, and he said, Susan, would you like to come and hear me practice? And he took me into the dressing room. And he played for me. I want to tell you, that was a highlight in my life. Uh, it was amazing. He was a dear, sweet, wonderful man. And I enjoyed doing the show. You know, I was a teenager and I was in awe of him. Just awesome. Just just awesome, Miss Ilo. Uh, and of course, you, you worked on... You can call me Susan. It's okay. Okay. I was just, I was just being very, very respectful because like, I... I... 
I know. I know. Just uh, because I've been a fan of yours for a very long time, and I just want to make sure I didn't say the wrong thing. <laughs> um, and the next question I have for you, Susan, is working on the nineteen, the original nineteen sixty six Batman, and working with Adam West and Burt Ward. Well, we never thought that this was going to be such a cult hit. I mean, I have done so many Batman things. Uh, it's it's amazing. The fans are just uh, so loyal and so generous and appreciative of what we did. We had no idea, we knew that it was, you know, it was campy. That's what we called camp, high camp then. And we thought it was cool, but we didn't know how cool. And uh, I remember Adam just hating the tights, hated the tights. <laughs> that was like a big, oh, it was terrible. And then of course I worked, uh, I was uh, Mousy, the Riddler's girlfriend, Frank Gorshin, and, uh, Frank and I just hit it off so great that we became lifelong friends. And um, we did uh, another show uh, together, Empire, Santa Fe, New Mexico, with um, uh, Richard Egan and uh, Ryan O'Neill and Terry Moore. Uh, and uh, Frank and I just through the years just uh, kept up our friendship up until the very end. I, the last time I saw him was at Michael's Pub. Uh, in New York, doing his stand-up and smoking oh. way too much, which I don't think helps. <laughs> you know, it helps. <laughs> and, I, and I chastise him for it. <laughs> Got to be the iron fist here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And of, of course, you worked on Bonanza. What memories of working on Bonan Bonanza as Elena Miguel? Yes, that was wonderful. Jay Novello played my my papa, and uh, Jay also was my papa in uh, Combat. And also, uh, it, it's one of the McHale's Navy things that I did on the television, as a television show. And um, we became lifelong friends. I, I called him Papa Jay. Papa Jay. He was like my <laughs> second dad. Um, as was Carol O'Connor, but I didn't call uh, him Papa Carol. Um, but also, um, working with Michael Langdon, uh, what, what a joy. And we became friends. And... Uh, we worked together on Highway to Heaven, and I was also uh, the matron of honor at uh, his uh, producer's wife's, who was the casting director's wedding. And we just had wonderful times together. Uh, Bonanza was a big part, a beautifully done show. Um, big, big part of my life forever because of uh, Michael. Was it one of the longest running uh, TV series, too? I think it might have been. I think it might have been. It was just done so beautifully and David Dortort who was the producer said to me said I'm going to dress you like a little doll I had more <laughs> changes of costume than you've ever seen I just loved it I was in every one of these gorgeous little outfits <laughs> it was heaven Th those were the days as they say over at Paramount which is a beautiful studio they always use that front gate you know that Paramount front gate for many things to represent um uh, a movie studio, you know, because it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So, so awesome. And uh, we talked about longest uh, run in TV series, of course, memories of shooting Gunsmoke as Rita Jane. Oh, my God. That was something else. I can tell you, boy, um, Jim Arnaz was a, such a sweetheart. But I said, you know, to the director, it was, I'm wearing, I'm playing this half-breed lady, which I don't know if that's correct, the correct <laughs> name, but that's what they said then, uh, and uh, Rita, and I'm, I'm, I'm like in sandals, practically barefoot, right? And I'm in these, you know, peasant kind of clothes and whatever, and Jim Arnett, this is our first meeting and everything. I am, they, in the old days, they had wooden plank sidewalks, which was like a step up. And there's the wood, and that was what was a sidewalk, you know, like at, at the sheriff's office or at the saloon. You walked on these wooden things. Well, Jim, who was, you know, 9,000 feet tall, and I'm mm -hmm. like 5'2", and you know, the first shot was this. What's his name? Anyway, he has Jim talking to me, and I'm looking up at him. Well, I'm looking up at him, and you can't even tell me. <laughs> <laughs> How can you do this? I'm and he's laughing. He says, 
oh, you're the director now. <laughs> you tell me what to do as a producer. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And then, of course, Bruce Dern. It was an all-men's show. It was called The Long Night. And it was all men except moi. There I was because I shot somebody. I didn't mean it. <laughs> but I did. But, and I had to. And I shot. with a, Oh, and I, I've shot a lot of times with guns. That's a whole other story. But um, it's difficult to learn. It's uh, a, a, apropos of what's happening now with this gun situation. Uh, wow. It, I, I don't think we used any real live guns. But, I, but we did do a lot of guns. You know, that was another era. Uh, but we never had any accidents. I don't know. But they were, they didn't, they, we have a, a fake gun in the rehearsal. Then they give me the real gun. And I was like, oh, this is heavy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And I'm little, that was heavy. But yeah, Bruce Dern was uh, wonderful to work with. Those people, it was a great show, great show. Totally agree. And like, especially what you said about the gun part too, like especially what happened with uh, poor Brendan Lee on the set of uh, The Crow. I, I totally understand what you're saying about the whole guns on the set thing, real life guns. Yeah, it's just, it's an amazement to me. And I don't want to get into the controversy about it, but, but uh, wow, uh, because I know that uh, prop people and, people everybody are really they really try to be very careful uh, true you know i never had a problem thank god yeah. well it, and uh, i gotta ask you too uh, another question i had for you um Matt, do you have any uh, fun stories you could tell me about uh shooting the love boat as your own uh bowlanger <laughs> boulanger 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 uh, we were French to, to marry millionaires. And uh, I actually spoke French because I had learned it in school and I also worked in France when I did Harry's Girls for NBC. And uh, <laughs> Barbie, Barbie knew nothing about French. So, okay, I became her teacher and her girlfriend in real life. And it was really hysterical. We had so much fun together. She'd always run to me, you know, how do you say this? How do you say that? You know, and I would <laughs> translate, of course, in French. And then I believe I was the only person who ever smoked on gun smoke. Because in one scene, if you see the show again, uh, I am on a chaise lounge in a bathing suit. And Jamie Farr is one of the guys who was trying to hook at the millionaire, right, who is not. He's pretending to with his sidekick friend. And I lift up my cigarette and I say, Avez-vous du feu? Which means, do you have a light? And, and he lights my cigarette. So, <laughs> yes, I am the only one on Gunsmoke, on a, a, a love boat that smokes. That's incredible. <laughs> it's a claim to fame. That's history right there. The only history person. right there. And then I gave up smoking. Awesome. <laughs> and of course, you've done many, many, many animation uh, projects, which I'm a fan of all of them. And this is the first question I'm going to ask you, uh, Susan. Memories of shooting Bebe's kids as Rodney the Rodent. And I believe you were the ticket lady, too, in the ticket booth. Yes, I, well, I remember the ticket lady. And I remember what happened to Rodney. What was the horrible thing that happened to Rodney? So, so what happened was that all the kids like started jumping on these poor uh you know animals that were i mean the poor people in the costumes like they took rodney they first took rodney and then they grabbed him and then they started throwing him up in the air and then what they did to the the, the frog character one of the characters uh the kids they cut off the uh character's flippers and says man we can use these for swimming oh. like it was just very brutal it was absolutely yeah. brutal well, those are the things that could get away with that well i just have to say about that i did uh um uh, write something about that somewhere here about oh uh, it seems to be that people love to see me as a mouse, okay? <laughs> so I have done, don't forget, uh, you know, a uh, Batman, Mousy. Mousy, yeah. Okay. Well, how about I did the series Fievel's Tales, American Tales. I was Mama Mousewitz. That's so cool. <laughs> so I do a lot of rodents. I used to laugh about that and say, for some reason, they like to cast Susan as a rodent. Okay, fine with me. I happen to love cheese. 
Me, me too. You know what? Me oh, too, Susan. No. Cheese makes me feel better. <laughs> What's your favorite? Mine is Jack Cheddar. Jack Cheddar is pretty good. I think, um, let me just see. I think I love mozzarella because you can melt it really good. I like it when it's gooey and lasagnas and, you know, things like that. It's Italian. I like Italian. <laughs> How do you feel about monster yeah. cheese? Yeah. And, and, you know, there's so many others. Havarti, I mean, my God. A good brie. <laughs> Do you like Munster or uh, provolone? I like provolone and Munster. I li I'm telling you, there isn't a cheese I don't think I like. If it's way, way, way too stinky, then, mm, you know. But I go pretty far with it. Then there's raclette. Raclette is uh, francais. And you can, it's kind of like you melt it and it turns into a fondue thing and you dip things in it. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like nacho cheese, where like you know, like they have the hot cheese yeah. and you put nachos. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, macaronis, nacho, and cheese, and mac and cheese, and nachos and cheese. Oh yeah, yeah. You're making me hungry, guys. Susan, my favorite cheese brand of all time, and anybody would tell you this, Velveeta. I love Velveeta okay. cheese. You can't miss it because <laughs> it's perfect for what it does. It's perfect. Yes. It's the most perfect, meltable, perfect, and it's very American. Yep, it's American. It's 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 basically yellow gold, is what it is. I will. <laughs> um, of course, you worked on the Smurfs. Uh, memories of working on the Smurfs as Petaluna. Petaluma, yeah, the flower. Um, yeah, well, Hanna Barbera. Let me just say, one uh, that was the first studio that I actually started doing animation. Hey, it's the King. And Ginny McSwain, who I hope you know who that is, a great director of animation. Uh, we became lifelong friends. She was she was an actress on that one. She also was an artist. And she switched over, didn't want to do that anymore, and went under the mentorship of Gordon Hunt, Helen Hunt's uh, 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 Course. father. Um, and uh, he, of course... The greatest director of all time. I mean, he just is so easy to work with. The sweetest man. And I also studied with him. I studied in his acting classes while I was working at Anna Barbera, working uh, for money, you know, as an actor. But I went to his, you know, uh, acting classes just the same. And it was so funny. Had no fear, no nervousness when I was doing my regular job at Anna Barbera. But I'd go to that acting class, and I'd be nervous as hell to get up and do a scene in front of him. Isn't that weird? <laughs> so weird. But, um, yeah, so um, working those shows at Hanna-Barbera where the Smurfs were, and I was, you know, originally uh, uh, there, my first studio was Heaven. It was beautifully handled. Uh, the, uh, the design of the studio was very friendly. Uh, it was like Nickelodeon is today. They had all sorts of cute characters all around, and everybody was kind of uh, in the in the mood, you know, to do their thing. And a lot of talent, a lot of talent there. Oh yeah. I learned on the job there. I learned on the job. It's one of the top three uh, animated studios. You had ha Hanna Barbera, of course, Disney, and Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah. At that time, uh huh. At that yeah. time, you know, then the others started happening, and I branched out. And all did you? Them. And that's what I wanted to ask you too, uh, Susan. Did you work for Filmation or no? No, Filmation. I think was older. That was okay. one of the older ones. Yeah, I don't think I worked for Filmation. That was really the old ones. They were those cartoons were amazing though. Yeah. I, hold up today. I believe they actually came out. Uh, Filmation actually was the responsible for Fat Albert and the and the and the Junkyard Gang. Places you can't remember who's who and what's what, unless it's on your paycheck. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, and of course, working on my favorite and my favorite role you did, working on Darkwind Duck as Neptunia. Oh, Neptunia. My favorite character you portrayed.
Darkling Duck. Okay, it's Tails. Uh, uh do are you talking about Tailspin, where you were airplane Jane? No, 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 no. I'm talking Neptunia. There is a, uh, a podcaster who does just that. There's, there's just that one um, um, uh, animated show. Yeah. Hmm, cool. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> but I loved her. She was, she was a hell of a gal. A hell of a gal. And what I liked about the show is that it dealt with really um, um, subjects uh, as far as, um, you know, the world and sustenance, you know, it was like that show and Toxic Crusaders, we were dealing with pollution and we were, you know, we were dealing with really it, hot topics. Yeah, envir envir environmentalists, environmental. Environment. That's yeah. what I was trying to think. Yeah, yeah, it, we were very environmental conscious. And they were shows that said something, even though the kids got a big kick out of our characters. Uh, the shows had something to say. The writers were great. Yeah, that and for Toxic Crusaders, I have to say, who I played uh, Toxie's mom. Did you want to you want to talk about your time on Toxic Crusaders? Well, that was <laughs> that was just madness, craziness. Toxic, Toxie's mom. Uh, it, it was just so much fun. I mean, um, I'm trying to remember all the people there. I worked with you know the same people, Maurice Lamarche, and you know all of all of these people, Jeff Bennett. And uh, Michael Michael Bell. Oh, Mikey. I love him. I had him on my show, uh, Michael Bell. He's a very yeah. wonderful man. Well, Michael and I did an on stage a show together. Um, um, his name is Jeff. Ben a bed full of foreigners. Um, yeah, Michael and I did a bed full of foreigners together at the West uh, End Playhouse here in LA. And uh, we ran for over six months. And it was incredible working with Michael. We had the best time. I played a French stripper <laughs> and a nun. Wow! Talk about uh, contrast. But it was uh, it was a um, an English farce, and it was just delightful. Michael is so talented. I've known him since I've been a little girl, and he knew my parents. That's how far back uh, Michael and I go. And you also worked with him on Darkwing Duck when he was Quacker Jacks, and you were Neptunia. Oh, yeah. We still, as a matter of fact, we still email each other and everything. Once in a while, I'll see him. I don't see him as much. I, I was close to his, uh, as a matter of fact, his uh, wife, Vicki Carroll, did the costume for me. Uh, uh, on, uh, Sweet. A bed full of foreigners. So cool. Vicki and Carroll is a big talent and an artist. Was, was Jim Cummins uh, great to work with? Oh, my Jimmy, my husband, you mean? <laughs> Betty, Betty. Yes, oh, Jimmy. Oh, now there's, wow. Big talent. Jimmy and I have worked on many, many shows, but I'm delighted to say that we are, of course, the regulars as Nettie and Chef Pistetti on uh, uh, Curious George. What a what an angel to work with. He's so talented, and we do additional voices, as you know, and and uh, uh, Jeff Bennett, of course, and of course Frank Welker, whom I met when I was uh, at Hanna Barbera, my first. Uh, job fair with Frank and I learned a lot from that man. Frank Welker. <laughs> Frank Welker? Yeah. Yeah, oh, he's another great one. He's a god. <laughs> he's just amazing. He's just amazing. It's such a, a joy to watch him. And you know what's wonderful about all these people and about the voiceover world, if I may share, is that they're very appreciative of each other's talent. They applaud your talent. In other words, when you'll be doing your turn, uh, on a show, they're like, "Oh, Susie, that was so great!" And you know, I mean, just so loving and and giving. It's a, a very special community. That's very beautiful. And I I, I got to ask you too before we get into the next question. Um, did you get to work with uh, S uh Susan Blue, Sue Blue? Oh, Susie Blue. Uh, well, again, one of my bestest, bestest friends. <laughs> we also talked together. Um. Susie was uh, teaching classes before me, and she said, why don't you give it a try? You know, come on, fellow. Uh, you know, let's see what you can do and everything. Well, she got me started, and by golly, I ended up, uh, you know, lecturing, having my own uh, group classes as well as one-on-one. -on -one. And I just stopped doing one-on-one -on -one because it was just, I give 900%, and it's just, you know, I I'd like to take some time to have some fun now and and, uh, and still work, 
but uh, I, I gave up on doing that. But yes, and she directed me in bazillion shows, and she would she could press my button. She would <laughs> say over you know the mic to me. She'd go up, Susie, uh, you know, do that thing that you do. Oh, that thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was it. That was the direction. Do that thing. Oh, I have, yeah, and what a talent she is as, as a voiceover and as a fabulous director. Absolutely. I had her on, I had her on my show. She was just a wonderful person. Like I just love Yeah, she is. And uh, And did, did you also have another guy I had on my show too? Did, did you ever been directed by Pat Fraley? <laughs> Pat and I. He was Pat when Pat first came to town, he worked with me on his first job and we were a pair of socks. Thoughts? That was our, I have no idea what the show was. I cannot remember, but all I remember we were socks. And he's a good teacher too. Yeah, Pat and I have done many things together, and I just respect and, and love him too. Yeah, there, I don't think there's anybody I don't know <laughs> or haven't worked with. So cool. <laughs> and you mentioned, of course, and this was one of my questions I had too. Uh, memories of working on Curious George as Nettie Pischetti. Right. And also, well, and also, I they loved. I did a dog. <laughs> and um, it was this little dog, and and uh, um, Chris uh, 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 Zimmer, Chris, wonderful director. Uh, she did. Uh, she was direct. She directs Curious George, and they are so giving and so. I mean, you know, they, it's a room full of of talent. You know, you've got Jeff Bendis, you've got. Uh, uh, Robbie Polson for God's oh, sake. Oh, Rob Polson, yes. I mean, how can you go wrong, right? And the laughter and the silliness, I mean, um, just amazing. Well, it was like working with Dom DeLuise on um, uh, Bible's American Tales with Dan Castellaneta. Oh, the voice of Homer Simpson? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Dan, Dan's playing the spider something, and I'm Mama Mouse the Witch, and I, and, and this... Dom DeLuise was a donkey. Was a, Dom would walk into the room and he'd start getting us laughing. We couldn't record. I mean, we started to do our lines and we started laughing. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> we would run over on time, but it was worth it. So cool. And, and, and Nancy Cartwright, I work with Nancy. Another great one. Yeah. yeah. Charlie Adler. Oh, Charlie. Well, Charlie lives. Charlie is not only a dear, dear, dear friend, uh, but um, he's a neighbor. He lives near me. And so, we see each other at the market. It's really exciting. I got to get him on my show one day. I oh, really do. Fabulous. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a, a talent. He, he did Torch Song Trilogy, you know. He was yes. On stage. And, uh, and he's a director. He's directed me, too, at Class B Sucio. Uh, when we did something, which I forget what we did, but it was over there. That was another company that was big for a while. I don't think uh, they're in uh, business anymore. Though. Very cool. And another show, and this is one of my favorites growing up too, Memories of Working on Tailspin as Airplane J. And, of course, working with uh, Ed Gilbert and the cast of uh, Tailspin. Okay, so who was in the uh, Remind me of that one, because that one's a little vague for me. Uh, Pat Fraley was in that one. Uh, Ed Gilbert, who I'm a huge fan of. The late, great Phil Hartman made one appearance in one episode, who I'm also a huge fan of, oh, Phil. Yeah, he was, yeah, I didn't work with him, but I worked with Pat. And I think I worked with Ed Gilbert, who also is on camera. Did, did you work with, I think he was on the show too, I could be wrong, but did you work with Cam Clark or Barry Gordon? Oh, Cammy, yeah. Yeah, I've worked with Cammy. Um, we've done a lot of things together. We've done Lupin together, and um, we've done a lot of shows together. Very very talented guy handsome as all get out and just so talented agreed yeah, we had a lot we had a lot of fun uh, yeah. did you enjoy your time on tailspin yes i did I, I just i hate to say this but i really i really don't have a problem that i can think of on any particular show that i didn't absolutely adore uh because don't forget we're a small community, or we were. Now it's, you know, it's kind of opened up to the stars and everything. But at that time, it was basically our 
you know, kind of cliquey group uh, that went from show to show to show. I mean, we could do three, four shows a day. And we would, and we'd meet each other at these studios. And those were the days, well, of course, way before <laughs> uh, the pandemic. But those were the days where we all uh, could schedule to be together in the room, which made it really work very, very well. Instead of uh, doing it um, while, you know, alone, where you'd walk in and do your thing and leave. I agree with you because that way you're able to feed off uh, the person's reaction and dialogue. It's it's better to record, and you probably agree with on this one too. It's better to record as a group as opposed to independently, right? Yes, yes, it is. It always is. But you know, for certain things we don't do it anyway. Like for video games and things like that, we go in and we just do it by ourselves. Uh, most of that stuff is just wild. So we have to anticipate what, you know, we get the line read before we speak type of thing so we know what the action is and what the feeling is. But to sit in a room with these talents and to just feel the emotion and presence of them makes all of us better. Agreed. And, and another show I was a big fan of growing up, of course, Pound Puppies. Memories of doing Pound Puppies as Florence. We were given. We were, they just say, here, here's your cell, you know, and this is what you look like. Well, you remember when it changed, I guess, I think you're old enough to remember this, that cells became such a big deal that the public could get. And yeah. my gosh, they were making a fortune, and I was getting them for free, and some people were throwing them away. Why would they do that? <laughs> because they were, they didn't, they didn't get it. You know what I mean? They just didn't get it. I certainly didn't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it. To be fair, to be fair, I didn't do it. I believe you, Susan. <laughs> um, of course, working on uh, the real Ghostbusters as Dr. Ruth. Oh, so I have to tell you about Dr. Ruth. So <laughs> the thing is this, um, I'm at a cocktail party in New York at my girlfriend's on Central Park West. And in walks Dr. Ruth. I didn't know they were friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so I couldn't resist with a little wine. And I said, oh, so <laughs> lovely to meet you. I do you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. And I said, yes. Well, I get, she cracked up. She fell in love with me. She said, this was just the best cocktail party she's been to in years. She said, where she met herself. And, you know, I, I'm petite, she's petite, and we just, we had a wonderful time. I love doing that character. I, I think she's such a dear heart. And she's still alive and kicking. Oh, God bless her. <laughs> and was my girlfriend, thank God, but she's not as old as Dr. Ruth. <laughs> uh, before I move to the next question, I just want to say one thing, uh, Susan, is that one thing, I, it's just so much, it's, it's so admirable and res so much admiration and respect that I have for you. Like, the passion that you give for each performance is the equivalent of Elton John whenever he sings his songs. And I say that as a huge Elton John fan. Wow, I am too. Wow, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. Uh, like, it's like when, you, when, you're t when you're talking as Neptunia or when you're talking as Airplane Jane, I, like, and you give like a scene where it's like, whether they're giving a, a passionate speech or something like that. It's like, I felt that. I felt that. Like, you give that performance, and to me, like, that's just very admirable. Uh, admirable. Pardon me. Thank you. Well, <laughs> you know, that's the intent. In other words, we, we give the inanimate characters on your screen, we give them souls. We give them eyes. They're only drawings. Let's face it. They're not real. We transform form them into living, breathing characters. And that's that's the intent. So if you feel the emotion, we did our job. We did it good. And bless you for that. Bless you. Um, of course, this is uh, we have a couple more questions before we wrap up. Uh, one of the questions I had for you was, do you prefer live action or voiceover? Choose. 
but the one thing that that is wonderful about voiceover work is that you can do so much more. In other words, I'm limited in my physicality, even with prosthetics or IG or, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, I'm still limited. I mean, I am physically what I am. In voiceover, ah, uh, it's an open field. You can play with mm -hmm. anything. You can be any age. You can be any ethnicity. You can be anything you want to be. Wow. What a playing field. What an open playing field. I mean, it's like open world. Your own picture. Yeah. It's a whole world that, you know, is yours and yours alone. So, you know, I say to anybody who wants to get into voiceover, go for it, man, because uh, it just takes you off on, on adventures that are amazing. I agree with you. And as a longtime fan of voiceover and voice acting, like I've had a passion for this since I was in, like, even when I was younger, like at age seven, like I, if you were to tell me, uh, PD, I need you to list for me uh, your favorite 30 voice actors and or actresses or whoever, I can literally give you them right there. I could say Susan Silo, Dan Claslinetta, uh, Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, Jim Cummins, uh, Bob Ber uh, Bergen, uh, Jeff Bergman, Jeff Ben, uh, Jeff Glenn Bennett, uh, you name it. I can name them like, like, like there's a Greg Berg, Greg Berger, like all these names. And all, and they, I'm just naming some people that were on my show too, like, like Paul Iden I had, like, and oh, just. Yeah. Michael Bell I had on the show, a uh, Philip Proctor who I've had. Uh, oh, my God. Don't forget, some of us also have the same agent. So we really see each other a lot. That's so cool. And and also, um, do you remember, uh, he was on Dark Ones Up too, uh, Tito Insana, Insana. I don't really recall him. I When I did um, El Tigre, How about um? How about Hamilton Camp? Oh, Hammy! Oh, the late great Hamilton Camp. He lost him so. Yeah, I, I. That was a heartbreaker for me. That guy was so adorable. <laughs> I worked with him a lot. Yeah, Hammy. God, I, mm. uh, another wonderful soul. God rest her soul. Is the late great Dana Hill. Oh yes, yes. There's two people I cried for when I was younger when they passed away. Dana Hill was one of them, and Phil Hartman was the other. Oh, Phil Hartman. Yeah, I think we all got really... That was upsetting because of how it happened, you know. True. And then we got, like, uh, the, uh, the newer stars, like, uh, like uh, voiceover. You got Tara Strong. You got oh, James Tara. Arnold Taylor. Tara and I did Shaolin Show Showdown together. Cool. Do you want to talk about that? Shaolin Showdown, yeah. Uh-huh. What was that, that like? Oh, that was wonderful. Weird fantasy Wuya. I got so many powers. <laughs> and then I played her as a beautiful woman. And she was very, very beautiful. Oh, bless you so much, Susan. I like the way you like you could stay in character. Bless you. We need more people like you on this world. In this world. <laughs> well, that's my agent. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> um, it's a company. It's a company. They're wonderful agents. C E F G. Bless them so much. <laughs> um, uh, of course, did you prefer playing the protagonist or antagonist? Oh, I love playing villainesses. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's so much fun to play. I love to take my teeth. And I was, what this villainous I was. And, and so many things. But it was uh, the one uh, with um, James Bond Jr. James Bond Jr. Yes, I was the, I forget who she was. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so cool um of course and this is going to be an absolute nerd of me asking this though and i access to every uh every guest star i had it's a it's a running gag i guess you could call it that um not literally um and that <laughs> uh, and that is whenever i'm not on a strict diet i am an absolute foodie i love food uh and this is going to get to my question though out of all the production companies you worked for which had the best catering scene over I thought it was screen music okay I thought screen music uh, was the studio that provided 
the uh, the production companies, you know, come and go. You know, they they I, who can remember, as I said, which production company you're working for? I remember the studio <laughs> and screen music always. There's always a spread, and it's like, oh God, I don't want to eat this. Talk about cheese! <laughs> always have great cheese there, and so yeah, I would say screen music, and then uh, production-wise, I go back in time to when I did Harry's Girls, and we were located in Europe. Uh, we were we were in Nice to start with, and then Paris. Dens were the best food I ever had. That was. <laughs> French food. Oh my God. The thing we had to stop doing was having wine at lunch because we couldn't do anything afterwards. So we said, uh uh, mix on the wine, but eat everything else is fine. But yeah, those were the those were the two things I, that I thought that really stood out. I see. And of course, uh the the final question I have for you, and this is gonna lead to the opening uh forum segment. And that is, what's next for Susan Silo? Now, Susan, this is the part of my show where I allow my guest stars. This is an open forum. You could talk about anything you want. You can uh, promote, hype, just speak your mind. Uh, I'm giving you the, I'm passing you the proverbial microphone. The, the, the floor is yours, Susan. Well, um, I'm always, you know, I'm a working actor. I always am auditioning. I have no problem with that. I am up, I'm up for a few projects now. Uh, I just finished a video game, and I'm also uh, starting to gather material, and bless your heart for giving me some, too, uh, to remind me of things. Um, uh, they've been asking me to write a book, and so I'm starting on that and uh, preparing um, my uh, memorabilia to look at and to get it down on paper and see if I can come up with a great title for a book that uh, people who might be interested in the story of my uh, career and my life. I would like to buy that book. When, when, you, when that comes out, I am definitely buying it. Well, good. <laughs> that'll, keep you, me, that'll keep me on my toes and get my, my stuff together, get my act together, as they say. You have, you have my support, Susan. As a loyal fan and friend, you always have my loyalty. <laughs> And, and I just have a couple of things to say before we wrap up. First of all, let me just say thank you for not only uh, doing this interview with, with me. It just brings back a lot of memories. Um, but I just want to say, too, like that, that you have this incredible gift where like you can take a 30 something year old fan and make him feel like he's a kid and bring him down like down here and make him feel like he's young again and watching Darkwing Duck as Neptunia or watching Bebe's kids as Rodney the Ronin. my life uh it really really does it uh that's what i live for i think that all of us who do this kind of work uh have that joy and passion and we want to pass it on we need that in this world we really really do i agree with you 100 percent. and let me just say this too uh, I, I know right now it looks like i'm very calm but deep down this child at heart is like I, and i felt this even before i was interviewing interviewing you deep down this child at heart is really thinking right now That's that's what this child heart is really thinking because I remember all those times my parents used to take me to Blockbuster and I would rent out tapes like like Baby's Kids, Darkwing Duck, Pound Puppies, you name it. Like I, like every time, like every Friday, my parents would take me to Blockbuster after a nice lunch at McDonald's or dinner at McDonald's. Pardon me. Uh, it's a Friday night and. And I remember, like, I was just having a blast. I felt like a kid. There's the old saying, there's a kid in the candy store. No, I felt like that kid at Blockbuster Video rented out the classics of some of my favorite actresses and voice actresses of all time. Well, I tell you something. Don't lose that spirit. Because I think that what keeps us going and what, what keeps um, uh, our talent and keeps getting fed is because of your passion, too, and your, your joy for us. We know you're out there. And we're playing right to you. We're playing right to you. It's all for you. And it does, in this world, especially now with all the problems that we have, I think we really need that. And we need you. We need people like you who uh, do see good in this world and promote it. Uh, and I think that's what 
good animation does. And I think it takes us all away from the troubles and shows us, you know what? The fantasy world can be just wonderful to, you know, to give us uh, a good feeling about life again, to be positive and to enjoy and, and be happier than what is surrounding us, to try and, and really um, catch that happy, catch the happy. Amen. Totally agree. And I, I just want to say, too, the premise of my show uh, is basically my way of saying thank you to all the guest stars I had on the show for those memories they gave me watching as a kid. This is, and it's no, it's no different with uh, my episode with you. Like, I really want to show my thank you and I want to show my appreciation for like the, the work that you put in, like in these projects and whether it's live action or animated, I, I think you're one of the best. Thank you so much. Uh, and can, can, can I, and this is probably the child at heart and asking me this, but can, can I get a message from Rodney the Roden? Hmm? Can you Oh man, I just remember it was a very high squeaky voice. Or even if, if you don't remember, like, how about Neptunia? Neptunia? Oh, well, she talked like this, darling. I mean, not forget our night. I'm so happy to be here. Peter, I love your kisses. <laughs> the pleasure so much. And one last thing before we go, and I feel like you deserve it. I've been waiting a long time to give you something like that. This, and that is, thank you, Susan. <laughs> thank you, Susan. <laughs> thank you, Susan. <laughs> You, oh, brilliant. Thank brilliant. you, thank you so much, and I will send you a link to this episode as soon as I'm done editing. Again, thank you so much. It was a pleasure and honor interviewing you, and you have an awesome night, Susan. Bless you. Bless, Bless you. you. Take care. Bye. Bye.